Okay, today I want to show you how we do some target suspect screening and we've acquired some files on a helix column which means we were looking for some polar metabolites and polar um, compounds including some amino acids and this data was acquired on a Angelin 6545 QTOF with a 1200 um, uh, HPLC and the samples um, contain some amino acids um, and basically what we would like to do from this data is uh, correlate whether some molecules are present and gain some confidence again on it's very much a screening approach so gain some confidence whether these are there justifying the uh, purchasing of a standard so let me just show you what the PCDL looks like this is a, a typical compound database library where we have entries in there and sometimes depending on where you get your library from you're lucky enough to have spectra uh, which correspond to the fragmentation of this um, entity whether it's been generated through um, uh, reputable by purchasing reputable standards and uh, doing it in-house so what we call curated libraries if they've been created or if they've been created in-house from your own subset of standards. So um, just generally what we see in these type of MSMS -MS entries is at different collision energies as these molecules are fragmented in the collision cell they undergo fragmentation and they produce small ions typically and these are what we call qualifiers and if we know these qualifiers co-elute with our main precursor or parent ion then we can gain more confidence in saying yes an analyte is there and that's very much a screening approach so in this case we've got a few basic entries we've got paradoxal creatine and for some of our entries we don't actually have uh, MSMS spectra just yet so let's move over to the data file what what does the data look like in this case from our base peak chromatogram if we just use our range select tool and we look at one peak we can see we've got three levels of data um, three levels of acquisition scan data in the first scan you can see you've got a just MS pure MS level scan in the second one you can see you've got a collision energy of 20 and 40 and this is synonymous with data that has been acquired in all ions mode instead of tracking the intensity of an ion and uh, fragmenting ions like we typically do in the uh, auto MSMS -MS approaches all ions fragments for every cycle of the mass spec and you can set how many cycles there is fragmentation there's a few benefits of running like um, an approach like this you tend to get better coverage of fragment ions and coverage over a peak and you can see fragment ions for, for low intensity peaks as well so let's go over how we're gonna run through a tar target suspect screening how we did we load up a library and look at some data so I'm gonna switch in my qual 10 from a navigator to the compounds view and also make sure that my configuration is in the advanced settings menu so just some basic parameters for target suspect screening we are going to select target suspect screening find by formula and we're going to effectively use the entries from our database to import formula and try and match that to the data file and then also import some fragment ion data and try and correlate that with precursor ions and see if we can get a coalition. So in this case because it's screening and we don't have any uh, we're not working with a fixed method from a supplier we don't have any retention time matches in our database at the moment so I'm going to uncheck this tech, uh, checkbox. So for the settings in this case the base peak chromatogram is going to be extracted um, and fairly basic settings where we need to go is the target suspect screening tab and in find by formula there's quite a few parameters that need to be set here so this is the target source again referring to our PCDL library and what we want to do is do formula matching so taking the formula from the database within 10 ppm and we want to extract a um, extracted ion chromatogram or expand the values for extraction to 20 ppm um, 
for this instrument that is um, quite wide we typically would do a, t a 10 ppm extraction window but when you're dealing with screening you do want to add a little bit of tolerance um, just to potentially also see what else is in the sample you can always reduce this value if the if the library is small enough and it screens fast enough the iron species in this case it was run on a helix column starting at a 90% acid nitrile in ammonium formate going in um, with a water gradient actually down to 60% um, effectively acid nitrile so remember from helix the the starting conditions are in high acid nitrile and your water phase effectively pushes the polar compounds that are adhered to the stationary phase off the column so almost like normal phase chromatography so we're going to look for sodiated and disprotonated species um, the rest of the settings if you've loaded a default method should should be um, fine for, for what we're doing here um, one thing we do need to look at is the fragment confirmation when do we use fragment ions from our PCDL to confirm an ion and you can set some parameters here you can tell it if the fragment ion has a retention time difference of greater than um, 0.1 minute then uh, penalize for, for that and um, don't always consider that a co-evolution so these three parameters here are really how we set the stringency of um, matching of fragment ions and hopefully this will all make sense once we have some data so we will come back to that these are the default parameters I typically use on first pass of data great so let's go back to our workflow we run the method workflow and it'll now scan through our PCDL and try and match things up with entries in the database um, let me just uh, show all the entries so in this case it's tentatively if we look at the entries in this table in our compound list it's tentatively found three molecules out of our database in the the one we've got a qualified um, entity we've got one that's not qualified and we've got one that's saying low score so how do we gain confidence from this result well let's look at the first entry so you can see what I mean by coelution and uh, qualifying a molecule and why this one is considered qualified so there's a creatinine um, remember what's happening we're going from MS level so full scan data where effectively an extracted ion chromatogram is created at both the protonated and the sodiated masses and then it looks for a peak if it finds a peak and it has a Gaussian distribution it can be integrated then it's considered an, a, a, a potential entry provided the PPM mass error is within our set tolerances that means that in our target sources we said formula matching needs to happen within plus or minus 10 ppm so it's found two ions one at 114 and one at 136 which match the ppm mass error of this formula so that's the first level of confirmation we're getting is a parent ion has been detected the next level of confirmation we then get is when the entries from the library the fragmentation entries are incorporated and extracted ion chromatograms of those are created and whether there's a peak which has a coelution with the parent ion is being evaluated and if that's the case it's then being scored so in this case let's have a look uh, we can go back to our database entry and we can go back to creatinine and we can look at our scan data we can see at 10 and 20 uh, collision energy or electron volts we can see we've got a few fragment ions 83 and 60 uh, 68 in this case if we look at the fragment ion uh, sorry 86 it's been brought in from the library and we can see that there is a intensity gain for 
this fragment at that extracted iron chromatogram. In that window we've created for this fragment iron, it seems to correlate to that of the precursor. The signal to noise is 22 as well, based on the calculation. There's your noise calculation, there's your signal calculation. Remember the criteria we set down for fragment confirmation? We told the uh, this uh, screening approach to look for molecules that have a retention time difference of point, uh, point 0.1 minute. In this case, there seems to be a good coelution, so a less than 0.1 minute deviation, with a signal to noise ratio of more than 3. In this case, that matches, and a coelution score of 85. Now, your coelution score plot is here, and you can see that for this green entry fragment 86, there is a coelution and closer to one means um, good correlation. So in this case, the score we're getting, the coelution score we are getting from this entity is um, the coelution score should be uh, sorry the coelution scores you're getting for the different fragment ions are here. So you can see for that um, 86 entry, just to confirm, uh, we're getting a coelution score of 80, 89, which uh, does fall within our coelution score criteria. So, uh, just a few parameters you can you can play around with. Initially, I do this with a small database before expanding it to very large databases of thousands of compounds. So, w we can then say creatinine has been detected because there are at least two qualifier ions which are present and they're showing a coelution score and a good signal to noise. If we uh, play around and we can decrease our thresholds and our limits, um, s some other ent entities can also be included. Um, so let's move over to creatine. Why is creatine not qualified. Um, in this case it says not qualified and you can see in the um, compound identification results window that none of the fragment ions seem to be coeluting. So if we look at the fragment ions there's we can't confidently say that these coelute the signal to noise may be too low. Potentially what's happening is there is a peak detected. Even if you look at the precursor ions, there is a, 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 a mass which correlates to the formula within that PPM mass error window of 10, but and uh, a peak, uh, a, a, almost a sort of peak, can be extracted if we follow those ions within this uh, tolerance window, but the fragment ions don't correlate. So we don't have any confidence in saying that molecule is really there. Let's look at prodoxamine 5-phosphate. In this case you can see a peak and the signal intensity is not um, strong, um, so it's a fairly low intensity peak, and we can see we are seeing a precursor ion corresponding by the looks of it to the protonated adduct. However, we're not seeing any sodiated adduct. And in this case, because our library doesn't contain any entries or MSMS -MS entries um, for this molecule, prodoxamine 5-phosphate, there's no way for us to match this up. And hopefully this has been useful for you. Um, just to summarize, we looked at a sample which was acquired using Helic uh, normal phase chromatography. We incorporated a PCDL library with some basic analytes and we screen those against our sample of interest to see what's potentially there. We could see some fragments for creatinine and this gives us more confidence potentially this then justifies purchasing of the standard and confirming the retention time of the standard, which is um, at always at the, the first approach you would try if you can afford to do so, um, and then move on to, to subsequent um, characterization techniques. So I hope this has been useful, and best of luck for your sample.